In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the force exerted by each block on the other. It's basically the contact force between the two blocks. Now, it's important to understand that as we push the two blocks to the right, the 5 kilogram block is going to exert a contact force on the 10 kilogram block. And as a result, the 10 kilogram block will also exert an equal but opposite contact force on a 5 kilogram block. And this is in agreement with Newton's third law of motion. For every action force, there is an equal but opposite reaction force. So how can we calculate those contact forces? Well, the first thing we need to do is find the acceleration of the system. The acceleration of the system is going to be the total force that drives the system in motion divided by the total mass. The only force that drives the system in motion is the external force 60 newtons. The total mass of the system is 5 plus 10 which is basically 15 kilograms. So 60 newtons divided by 15 kilograms will give us an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of the two blocks. They have to have the same acceleration because they move together at the same rate. So now that we have this acceleration, how can we calculate the contact force? Well, let's focus on one block at a time. So let's start with the 5 kilogram mass. So the 5 kilogram mass feels an applied force of 60 newtons that accelerates it towards the right. And it also feels another force. The 10 kilogram object exerts a contact force on the 5 kilogram mass. So the net force in the x direction acting on the 5 kilogram mass is the difference between the applied force and the contact force. The net force is equal to ma. Now let's call this mass m1 and let's call this m2. So now we need to isolate the contact force. So I'm going to take this term, move it to the left side where it's going to become positive fc. I'm going to take this term, move it to the right side, where it's going to become negative ma. So the contact force is the difference between the applied force and the net force ma. So we have an applied force of 60 newtons to the right. The mass of m1 is 5 kilograms, and we have the acceleration, which is 4. So this is 60 minus 5 times 4, which is 20. And so the contact force is 40 newtons. So I'm going to write that here. Fc is equal to 40 newtons. Now how can we confirm that we have the right answer? What we need to do is calculate the contact force on the 10 kilogram mass as well. If we get the same answer, then we know that our work was done correctly. Now, what forces are acting on the 10 kilogram mass? The only force acting on the 10 kilogram mass in the x direction is the contact force, which is the force that the 5 kilogram mass exerts on the 10 kilogram mass. And so the net force acting on the 10 kilogram mass is equal to the contact force, since that's the only force acting on it. There's no force on the left side, or rather on the right side, that pushes it to the left. So this is the only force acting on it in the x direction. So M2A has to equal the contact force. So mass 2 is 10 kilograms, and the acceleration is 4. So 10 times 4 will give us the same answer of 40 newtons. So therefore, we know that the contact force has to be 40, because we got the same answer on both objects. So that's how you can calculate the contact force exerted by each block on the other if there's no kinetic friction. But now let's try a problem where there is kinetic friction. Let's see what we can do. Number two, calculate the contact force exerted by each block on the other in the figure shown below. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the two blocks and the horizontal surface is 0.20. 
So just like before, we need to calculate the acceleration of the system. So the acceleration, as always, is going to be the total force driving a system in motion divided by the total mass. So the force that drives it in motion is the applied force, which is uh, 84 newtons. And now we do have a frictional force that acts on both blocks, which we can call Fk. So we got to subtract the applied force by the total frictional force. And then we need to divide it by the total mass. That's m1 plus m2. So let's call this m1 and this one m2. Now, kinetic friction is mu k times normal force. And the normal force of a block on a horizontal surface is mg. So we have mu k m1g. That's the kinetic friction acting on the 4 kilogram mass. And also mu k m2g which is the kinetic friction acting on the 8 kilogram mass. So we can basically write that as mu k m1 plus m2 times g. And then divided by m1 plus m2. If you distribute mu k and g to m1 plus m2, you're going to get the same expression as before. So this will give us the acceleration of the whole system. So the applied force is 84 newtons mu k is 0.20, the total mass, m1 plus m2, that's 4 plus 8, which is 12 kilograms, and g is 9.8. And then let's divide it by the total mass of 12. So 84 minus 0.20 times 12 times 9.8, that's 60.48. And if we divide it by 12, then this will give us an acceleration of 5.04 meters per second squared. So now that we have the acceleration of the system, let's calculate the contact force exerted by each block on the other. So let's focus on the 4 kilogram mass. So the 4 kilogram mass feels an applied force F that accelerates it to the right and then there's a contact force exerted on the 4 kilogram mass by the 8 kilogram mass. And at the same time, kinetic friction also opposes the motion of the 4 kilogram mass. So the net force in the x direction acting on, let me redraw that, that just didn't look right. The net force acting on block 1 is going to be the applied force, which is in a positive x direction because it's directed to the right. And the other two forces are in the negative x direction, so I'm going to put a negative sign in front of it. So it's going to be minus the contact force and minus the kinetic frictional force. So the net force is going to be M1A. And we need to get the contact force. Kinetic friction is going to be mu k times the normal force, which is M1G. Now I'm going to take this term and move it to the left side. So it's going to be positive FC. I'm going to take this term, move it to the right side, where it's going to be negative ma. So the contact force is the applied force minus the net force minus kinetic friction. So in this problem, it's going to be 84 newtons minus m1a, or 4 times the acceleration of 5.04, minus mu k, which is 0.20, times m1g. That's 4 times 9.8. So go ahead and type that in. So I got a contact force of 56 newtons. So now let's see if that answer is correct by calculating the contact force acting on the 8 kilogram mass. So here's the 8 kilogram mass. Now what forces are acting on the 8 kilogram mass? We still have the contact force exerted by the 4 kilogram mass on the 8 kilogram mass, pushing it to the right. And we do have a kinetic frictional force slowing down the 8 kilogram mass. So the net force acting on the 8 kilogram mass 
is the difference between the contact force and the kinetic frictional force. So the net force is going to be based on Newton's second law, ma, or in this example, m2a. And to calculate the contact force, we need to move this term to the other side. So the contact force is going to be the net force plus the kinetic frictional force. So m2 is 8, the acceleration is 5.04, and we know fk is going to be mu k mg, but mu k m2 g. So mu k is 0.20, mass 2 is 8 kilograms, and g is 9.8. So 8 times 5.04 plus 0.20 times 8 times 9.8, that's going to give us the same contact force of 56 newtons. So now you know how to calculate the contact force exerted by each block on the other. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.